Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we'll be covering topic 5.14, which is integrated pest management, or IPM. So integrated pest management is a way to control pests with the goal of minimizing pesticide use and environmental disruption. So we'll talk today about the different methods that are used and the advantages and disadvantages of IPM. So our objective for the day is to be able to describe what integrated pest management is, as well as the benefits and drawbacks that it brings. We'll discuss specific methods like biocontrol, crop rotation, intercropping, and introducing natural predators. We'll also be practicing using data to support a solution at the end of the video. So the name, Integrated Pest Management, reminds you that it's an integrated way, so a bunch of different methods to control pests while decreasing pesticide use and hopefully decreasing environmental disruption. So it's going to hinge around doing research and monitoring what pests you actually have so that you can make sure that your approaches are targeted specifically to those pests. So you use a whole host of methods which will involve first catching and identifying which pests you actually have, then taking into account factors like the weather so you can potentially plan around the pest natural life cycle. And then once you've identified which pests they are, when they're likely to be breeding, you can start to apply methods such as biocontrols, which could be adding a specific natural predator to your field so that they can take care of the pest themselves. You could use methods like crop rotation, which involve planting different crops in different seasons to disrupt the pest's natural food source. And then you can even use a method called intercropping, which we'll talk more in depth about shortly. So as this name implies, biocontrol is short for biological control, and that involves adding a natural predator, a natural competitor, or a natural parasite to control your pest population. So you can either buy the pest control agent yourself, so you could purchase ladybugs in the mail, or you could plant habitat that will naturally attract predators to your agricultural fields. So some examples here are ladybugs, which are especially effective at controlling aphid populations. You can use spiders to control a wide variety of insect pests. And then also parasitic wasps are especially effective for controlling different species of caterpillars that may attack your crops. So because pests typically have one specific food source that they require, rotating your crops can prevent them from establishing themselves in the soil and just continually feeding on that same crop. Because they lay their eggs in the soil and then the larvae hatch and they need their preferred food source, moving that crop each year so it's a different species will prevent them from establishing in your soil. So we can see here if we use a three-year cycle and plant a different crop every year, it's just going to prevent those larvae from having the food source they need and prevent the pest population from becoming established. Another benefit is that by rotating your crops, you can keep your agricultural fields planted for a longer portion of the year because after you harvest one crop, if you use another crop that is able to be grown in that intermediate period, that's going to prevent weeds from establishing themselves in the bare soil over time. And finally, there's a really neat method called intercropping. So it can be sometimes referred to as a push-pull system. And this is because you're going to use two plants that will strategically deter the pest from your crops. The pull plant is a species that will emit chemicals that attract the pest towards that plant and causes the pest to lay their eggs in that plant instead of near your crops. The push plant is a plant that emits a sort of chemical that will deter the pest from going near your crops. So in this example, we have desmodium, which is a plant that releases a chemical that deters moths from going towards your crops. Then you have the napier grass, which emits a chemical that attracts the moss. And so just using the natural chemicals that are secreted by plants, you can deter the moss from going towards the corn and instead favoring the napier grass as a place to lay their eggs. It can even be used to attract natural predators of the moth. And so the napier grass emits a chemical that's going to attract natural predators of the moth, and it can provide a habitat for other predators that may prey on other pests. Now we'll look quickly at some of the benefits and the drawbacks of integrated pest management. So the benefits and really the entire purpose of IPM is to reduce pesticide use. If you're reducing pesticide use, you should be reducing the deaths and mutations that result in non-target species. So remember that atrazine can cause intersex frogs. Uh, we can have eagles whose eggshells will thin and the death of their hatchlings because of DDT. And we are having large uh, colony collapse in bee populations or die-offs in their populations because of an herbicide called glyphosate. So minimizing pesticide use is really beneficial to a number of non-target species. We're also going to reduce the harmful effects on humanity. Many pesticides are known to be carcinogens, meaning they cause cancer. So decreasing their use is going to be really beneficial for human health. 
And finally, we're going to limit the contamination of our ground and surface waters, which have pesticides washed into them by agricultural runoff. The main drawback of IPM is that unfortunately it is quite time consuming and it can be costly. Now this is because you often have to conduct research and actively monitor the pest populations rather than just selecting a broad pesticide and crop dusting or flying over your fields with a small airplane. And so it does take more time and oftentimes it takes more money to get it established. The suggested science scale for practice FRQ 5.14 today is to use data or evidence to support a potential solution. So take a look at this graph and then use the data in the graph to justify whether or not these data support the use of biocontrol as a method of limiting pest damage. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe for future APES video updates and check out other notes over here to the side. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.